Yeah, it's actually, well, it wasn't something that I really thought about. Um, you know, just something that I just wanted to do. It actually just fell in my lap because when I first started coaching, especially here, a lot of people were like, so where do you, where do you get your clothes from? Like, you can really dress. Can you style me? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm like, you know what? If y'all asking me about my clothes, my clothes and the things that I'm wearing and stuff, I might as well just come out with my own stuff so y'all can have, you know, access to it. So it's something that really just fell in my lap. A lot of people did, you know, mention it. Well, I'm sorry, have mentioned it to me and, you know, said something about it. And then during quarantine, I'm just like, you know what? Let me just go ahead, get my LLC and do everything. And it just started rolling. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And for those of y'all who might be your first time tuning in, the premise of this show is to focus on stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So if you have not subscribed, if you're listening on YouTube or Apple, wherever you're tuning in, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get up to date with all the latest episodes as we roll out the content. Now on to today's guest. We have a very special guest in the virtual studio uh today and uh this, this young lady we, we connected and you know she she's just she's something else in, in a good way you know she, she's something else in a good way um but I'll, I'll go ahead and introduce her and we're gonna get this thing rolling so not only is she a coach but she's also a mentor and in addition to being a mentor she also is a wbca 30 under 30 honoree i want to introduce to the beyond the ball podcast Coach Jay, Coach Jay, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Now, just take a take a moment, take a little time, and give the good people out there a, a snapshot of, of who Coach Jay is. Okay. Well, my real name is Jean Marie Wilson, but a lot of people call me Coach Jay. I am from Prince George's County, Maryland, the DMV area. Um, little fun fact by myself. I'm a dog mom. <laughs> His name is Kodak. That's the love of my life. I, listen, he's an essential. So I got to tell people that every single time. That's my, that's my baby. Um, I'm currently coaching at Texas A&M University Commerce. Uh, been here for three years. I'm going on my fourth year here now. And yeah, coaching is my passion. I love it. Okay. Okay. Well, since, since you, since you hop, hop this thing off with being a dog mom, did, where did the name Kodak come from? <laughs> Well, Kodak is um he's 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 a black uh sheepoo, so the rapper Kodak Black. So if y'all this him right here. Mm. <laughs> so his name is Kodak Offset Wilson. Offset is like the, the Migo. That's my favorite Migo. Oh. So I had to give him a name. <laughs> the full name? You, you Kodak had... Offset Wilson. Yes. Yes. So so you're a fan of Migos too? Yes, I love Migos. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. 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 Coach Jay, when, when we first when we first connected, right? We first we first linked up, and you know I I, I found you on Twitter, and and I was I was I was looking through your profile a little bit, and I was like, oh, she kind of fly. You're seeing you know seeing seeing you you had the footwork going, okay. you 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 were stylish, and I was like, let, let, let me just let me just connect with her, y'all. When I connected with her, she big time me the first time we connected. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the first time. In, in, anyway, anyway, Co Coach Jay. So, <laughs> so when it comes to just you being a coach and you you being a mentor, and and and, and even and even the other things that you do, like what what keeps you motivated j just to be in this space? Because I know it's taxing. It's taxing. How how you stay motivated? Man, listen. I I think it's just. The people that you surround yourself with um, to go to practice or, you know, go into my job every day, knowing that I work with people that basically have my best interests or I consider them as family in the workplace. It motivates me uh, every single day just to, you know, want to be around them and want to support them as well, especially with the student athletes too, to kind of see them transition from their freshman year to their senior year and um, how much they mature as a 
student athlete, you know, into becoming a woman is just, it's just breathtaking. It'd be times where I'm looking at them and I'm just like, wow, I remember when you was, um, you was a freshman and you was just so mature and you was just doing all these crazy things. But now that you're a senior, I'm just like, is this the same person? So it makes me feel like I was impactful to them. Wow. Wow. What, what is it like though to be, because your personality is 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 so relatable, and and I I feel like you're you're so down to earth. So mm-hmm. I know people like even though the, it is the mentor relationship, I know you're like a like big sister, you yeah. know, like it's like big sister, mom, auntie, like all wrapped up in, in in one. Just you know, dealing with the people that 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 like you deal with. So like talk talk a little bit about that about that <laughs> culture that you know you've been able to create just with with your players and you know just people across the country because I know I know you connected. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's crazy because a lot of people say that my personality and my energy is very, very contagious. So I can, you know, pass it all, um, pass it on to other people as well. But it's funny that you said like the big sister, the auntie, and all that because it goes hand to hand, especially you know, um, with coaching and what I'm doing. So if I'm in practice and I'm the I'm the energetic one, so I'm like, let's go, like I'm the one that's you know playing around, but being serious at the same time. Cause I, I it gotta be a balance. You know, the head coach is the person that's like very demanding. We need to do this. We need to do that. Then you got our associate head coach who's right under him that, you know, balanced it out a little bit. Then you just have me. That's like, look, I just want everybody to get along. I just want, I just want practice to go smooth. But when they, you know, do something where uh, I have to kind of hold them accountable, it just completely shift the shift. Now I'm the mom. Okay, now it's all right, Coach Jay. Who made Coach Jay mad? <laughs> so that's how I kind of uh, shift back and forth, um, especially with you know the student athletes. But when it just comes down to you know connecting with other people and even like you know connecting um, with you when we first talked, it's just um, like I said, I don't know if it was my personality. I think it's because I'm very you know transparent and authentic. I don't really change who I am. Um, just because you know I'm I'm speaking to somebody, I'm just being myself. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I mean I think that's dope because having having that level of balance mm-hmm. and and being being that relatable. So now you've built you've built rapport, or or, or uh, one of the best analogies I also oftentimes hear people talk about is like building up that that bank account, right? So right. being able to, you know, put those deposits in the fun and, you know, the encouragement. And then when it comes time where you got to make a withdrawal, you got to cash that check. Okay. You know, hey, hey. <laughs> I like <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, 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 that like you, you put in that work and now, you know, when, when it comes time for, for a player to for you to reprimand a player or for you to pull a player off to the side, you know, they're not they're not get, giving you none of that lip. They're just like, oh, yeah, you, you're right. You, mm-hmm. you're right. I, absolutely. Like I said, it's, it's like a shift. It's like if Coach Jay is telling me to do this and she's very stern about it, it's like, OK, then I really messed up because, like I said, I'm the one that's, you know, the, the nurturer, the one that's like, come on, like, I know he's yelling at you, but we got to get this together. But if I'm completely just done with you, then, you know, it's like, dang, I messed up. I got to get my life together. <laughs> so did so did Coach Jay always know that she was going to be a coach? It's crazy. No, Coach Day did not, <laughs> did not, did not, did not. I, uh, when I first started, um, you know, trying to figure out what I wanted to do in college and things, it was always to be a, um, a, a sport lawyer. I'm like, you know what? I'm a, I'm gonna be a sport lawyer. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. And then when I took that class, I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I can't do it. <laughs> Shout out to all the sport lawyers. Y'all got it. I can't do it. So uh, as I went on, you know, with my college journey um, and I began, you know, to, you know, play basketball and, you know, get that bond with my team and stuff like that. Uh, it was a lot of times where me and my coach really didn't get along. So I w- I told myself, you know what, I'm a coach because once again, I'm going to be a coach that, you know, my coach wasn't able to kind of, you know, be for me. So that's how I kind of got into coaching. Wow. So you want to right the wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> what? That no, I mean, that's not something that, that that I've heard I've really heard before. But I I mean, but I think that's really dope and really powerful because I mean thinking back over my career, I I you know, I I've had coach I'm I'm cool with the coaches I've had. You know, right. it, it, it was what it was, but 
there, there are some coaches out here that be wilding. Yeah, but let me go back with this. She, let me say this. She wasn't um, just a terrible coach. She wasn't because, you know, now that I am a coach, I've realized she does, she was doing things because of this or she was doing things because mm. of that. So I, I've realized that and I, you know, I learned from it and I, like the older, you know, that I become and the more that I coach, I understand. But during that time, because you said, when did you know you wanted to coach? I'm like, listen, I'm a coach because this lady get on my nerves. We keep button heads. She, listen, I'm going to be a coach that she never was to me. But that's that's my road dog now. I tell her all the time, I don't like you as a coach. I like you as a person. So <laughs> that's how it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. So back in the day, was you getting buckets, co- coach? I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm just curious. I, I have to, the, the people, the people want to know, you know, the people want to know. <laughs> yes, I was. Yes, I was a, like, I was a silent person getting buckets. Like, I'm, I'm, I was one of the ones that you like, hmm, she, can she really get a bucket? And then it's like, when you play me, it's like, oh yeah, you know what? Nah, I, I really got to check in, especially if you make me mad because, what a lot of people don't know is that I'm really left-handed. So when I'm not mad, I usually use my right hand. But when I'm like completely pissed off, I just use both. So I'm just going at you now. So it's it was kind of hard to start me, and I'm kind of tall for a guard. So yeah. so you just so so the left hand was like your uh, I don't know, like your <laughs> Thanos hand. I don't know. You just want to snap, and then the world just fall apart. Like <laughs> I don't. It was just I don't know. It was just one of those that. I wasn't really forced to use my left hand because I kept getting buckets because they always used to just push push me right. But if somebody uh, was mad and cut me off with my right hand because it's on a scouting report and they really doing it, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just I'm just about to tell you by going left. Okay, okay, okay. So I so I, I've I've never really I never really asked anybody this, but I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you, Coach Jay, because I I feel like you can you can handle it. Okay. But when it when it comes to just the I don't want to say the comparison of men's basketball versus women's basketball. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that women's basketball hasn't gotten their just due or, or or, or where do you feel that we can do better just in, you know, supporting the women's basketball movement? Well, I do think that um, women's basketball has definitely evolved over time. Uh, I know when I was playing, it wasn't really, broadcast like that it wasn't really out there like that jerseys wasn't coming out um it wasn't like it wasn't really talked about it was like oh that's just women's basketball but i do think because of the type of players that we have now not saying you know it wasn't talented players you know in my day or back in the day because you know those women made the way for players now but i just think it's you know kind of like um a whole different breed now. You have players that's training and have the ability to train with men. Um, you have players that can play, like can give a male a bucket. So I think in order to kind of, you know, keep um, that status up for women's basketball to get out there, I just think it just needs to be broadcasted more and the power of social media. Um, that's mm-hmm. something that really helped women's basketball out a whole lot because you have pages like Overtime Women's Basketball. Um, and then you have other um streams that you know like espn and stuff that's talking about women's basketball more so just continue to talk about it and get it out there especially pushing it through the media is something that i think that would help it yeah 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 yeah. i mean because we saw with what march madness for the for the women's basketball for march madness i mean the mentions and the notoriety and just the attention uh mm-hmm. that, that the women's tournament was getting more more attention than the men's tournament and rightfully so <laughs> like the their Baylor and UConn game was something crazy. Like you had NBA players talking about it. So I think it's definitely something that's, you know, on a definitely on to come up. Yeah, I think I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, you don't you don't know that you enjoy something until you get the opportunity to experience it. So when you get more exposure, then that introduces you to more experiences to where then you can, you know, make the decision for yourself. So right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good point, Coach Jay. Good point, good point. Thank you. <clears throat> so now let's take a little. Let, let, let's so let's take a slight pivot. Earlier we were talking. We're talking offline. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> rip, rip. <laughs> oh I'm man, with my foot over here though. <laughs> this is too funny. If if anybody listened to the podcast, I'm sorry. Y'all need to be watching on YouTube because Coach Jay over here just hit a just hit a solid <laughs> rip through. Okay, um, but. <laughs> 
but you you but you were telling me which i didn't know until you just said it offline that that you know you're you're in the midst of pursuit of becoming dr j yeah. dr coach j dr. coach j yes yeah talk, talk about it talk about it. What, what are you pursuing so I am um, getting my PhD in education. So the concentration is actually sport management and athletic administration. I am researching right now the lack of um, underrepresentation of African American female head coaches at the Division One level. Mm. Right. And it's crazy because it kind of messed my research up a little bit this year because I feel like more women in color are getting jobs, especially at the D1 level. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's your research. That's my research up. But, but you know what? It's, it's still something that um, uh, research needs, especially with women in sport, because that number is still low, being as though, you know, we're, you know, women of color are getting jobs now. The number is still relatively low. So they messed it up a little bit, but it ain't too, too much. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so what's next when you, what's next when you get the PhD though? Like what, what happens, what, what happens, happens then? Though? Dr. Coach J? Well, when I get my PhD, I'm going to be in season because it's going to be in January. So <laughs> when that is over, um, you know, eventually, uh, I wanted to, you know, transfer over to um, the admin side and be an AD at the HBCU level, but that's not going to happen until my heart completely tells me to just be done with coaching. Because, you know, when you are the AD, you really don't deal directly with the student athletes. That's, mm. that's the coaching part of it. And coming into um, coaching and, you know, coaching here, especially at Commerce, has gave me, you know, a better understanding and um, a more will to just want to coach because I see the impact that I have on my players. Mm. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking because when I, when I heard you say you're, you're pursuing your PhD and I know that you're still coaching, like you're still mm -hmm. coaching in the midst of pursuing your PhD. Yeah. So I was just thinking, I'm like, if you can do that, then no student athlete should have any excuse for anything oh you're right i tell my listen when i tell you for my we have academic meetings and in my academic meetings my players cannot say out their mouth that i don't have time especially to me because they already know that i'm getting my phd they already know i still have to be a full-time coach and make sure that i'm i'm really still pursuing and doing stuff in my job in order for me to keep my job so that's scouting reports that's travel that's expenses that's 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 babysitting y'all. So you can't sit here and tell me that you can't get work done and play basketball at the same time because, baby, I'm balancing all these and still getting my Ph.D. So, yes, they, they should be able to do their work easily. Coach J, everyone. Coach J. Coach <laughs> J. Can, can we can we just pause for a moment and can we just talk about the strength of a black woman? Talk to me, Coach J. <laughs> just, just, just talk. Now, I'm, I'm, ser I'm so serious. No, I'm, I'm, I'm really serious because we just lifted that off. And I'm just thinking, I, I think this is just that time. This is that moment to where we, we should just we should just take a moment. We 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 should we should just take a moment really just to just celebrate celebrate the black woman. Hey, yeah, definitely. It's hey, it's it's amazing, man. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's, it's a whole lot of black women out there that's you know doing the same thing. And just picture the ones that's in coaching that's that's moms. Lord, I can't even picture that. So you have, I know somebody, um, Christine Kelly, who's a mentor of mine. She's actually the associate AD at um, Vanderbilt. So she's a mom. She's a associate AD. She was getting her PhD, you know, when she wasn't at Vanderbilt, when she's at John C. Smith, but she still was an AD and a mom. She was getting her PhD at the same time. So it, it can be done and it's, it's stressful, but, you know, we get it done. We make it through. <laughs> golly, golly. Man, mm -hmm. man, the black woman, the <laughs> black woman. I wish I had the claps. I'll just, <laughs> Clap just, that. Just, just, for, just for the black woman listening to the show. Cause they probably snapping right now. <laughs> they like, hey, yeah. You know, finger snaps, finger snaps, claps, all that. Cause I mean, it's it because it's, it's, it's one thing when you see stats on paper, right? It's one right. thing when you see the stat understanding that, and I'm going to say some stuff that's not going to be that pe everybody ain't going to like. But on one side, when you see that the that that the, that the black woman is sometimes, you know, casted out, 
or the black woman is often put to the side or the black woman is put down and all these different things, but still just being so resilient and still just showing up and still just making things happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, black women. (laughs) <laughs> gotta love them right <laughs> oh man you got gotta love them because i mean they because they still do it with elegance and they still do it with class mm-hmm. very yeah absolutely because if you don't it's now it's a whole nother subject so you you got to you got to carry yourself uh, so, yeah, man I, yeah that's definitely a damn if you do damn if you don't type situation absolutely mm-hmm. uh, but 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 we can't talk about elegance and class coach jay <laughs> Without just talking about your 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 keen sense for fashion. <laughs> oh man. Keen sense <laughs> for fashion. Best, best dressed, everybody. Coach Jay, best dressed. <laughs> listen, I told I told him, like, listen, you this the authentic coach Jay. So they probably like, I gotta see it. <laughs> Cause this right here is not an image of what I normally be looking like. But yeah, I get that all the time. I get that all the time because like you said, it's um when I first got here, uh, talking to my boss, Jason Burton, you know, we have an all black, like uh, my staff is all black and, you know, in coaching and things like that. And at the point of time, before we merged conferences and stuff, he was the only African-American male head coach in our conference. So he's like, you know what? I don't care what we doing. I don't care where we are. We need to dress apart like our staff has to be nice like y'all gotta y'all gotta look this way when we have games i gotta look this way when we recruit and you know i really appreciate him for that because all in all like you said like people do see that and they see that you know dang like she she can dress her tail off or even they say it all the time like y'all the best dressed staff in the country (laughs) so Mm. definitely that if you got you gotta see everybody though we we look sharp we look clean Wow. Okay. Yeah, one of my interview questions is how do you dress for game day? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> I gotta know. Now that's funny because I remember my coach, and that was probably the only time I actually saw him like wear a, a polo. Any other day, nah, it wasn't, you know, that was and it was a polo with slack. So it's like that's all you that's all you got. That's, that's anyway, this, this this is about you, Coach Jay. But I I, I want you to dive, dive in a little bit deeper, though, to okay. talk about because you 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 shared you shared about you all being the best dressed staff in the country, which is fair. I'm okay. not I'm not here to dispute it. I'm not here to dispute it. Okay. okay. But then on the other side, now now let's talk about Coach Jay's love for fashion. Let's okay. let's go down that let's go down that trail. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's I. I, it's just, how can I explain it? I feel like whenever you dress, of course, it expresses, you know, how you are or how you're feeling at that point. Because literally I can pick out a game day outfit the night before and then right before the game, I might not be feeling I'm like, I'm completely, I'm completely changing it. So um, I actually, it's crazy. I actually took that and was like, you know what? I'm going to actually get something that I know for a fact that I can wear and I can like during my season. So that's the reason why I came out, you know, with my own um, clothing brand, um, J, J. Marie Officials. That's It's dropping June 7th. And it's basically just geared towards um, young professional women. Um, in different careers and stuff. So it's just not geared towards coaching. A lot of people think it is because, you know, I'm only wearing it on the sidelines and stuff, but it's for, you know, people, CEOs, people that's in corporate. It's for, it's for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And ha- has this been something that you, that you've had a passion for? Like you, you, you wanted to do this or this is something that kind of came as, you know, as, as you all were dressing for success on the sidelines and everything like that. Yeah, it's actually, well, it wasn't something that I really thought about, Um, you know, just something that I just wanted to do. It actually just fell in my lap because when I first started coaching, especially here, a lot of people were like, so where do you, where do you get your clothes from? Like, you really dress. Can you style me? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I'm like, you know what? If y'all asking me about my clothes, my clothes and the things that I'm wearing and stuff, I might as well just come out with my own stuff so y'all can have, you know, access to it. So it's something that really just fell in my lap. A lot of people did, you know, mention it. Well, I'm sorry, have mentioned it to me and, you know, said something about it. And then during quarantine, 
I'm just like, you know what? Let me just go ahead, get my LLC and do everything. And it just started rolling. Wow. So on top of pursuing the doctorate degree, on top of being an assistant coach, mentor, auntie, mom, <laughs> uh, you know. Cousin, yeah. <laughs> and then we, man, wow, wow. Well, I will say, I mean, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you because, you know, I've, I've, I've seen the pieces as, as you slowly drip them out. And, you know, I've also seen the, the, the emojis that people are dropping up under there, you know, with the with like the drip of the water and all the other stuff. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm excited for the line to drop. And and then when things get going again and to, to see y'all styled up on the sideline, see everybody wearing, you know, the Coach Day originals. Hey, definitely. And then depending on how it goes, I'm actually in the works of trying to get a men's line for suits. So I'm, I'm making something happen over here. <laughs> you're right. You, hey, you know, I, I mean, you know, I'm just up the road. So if you need somebody to, if you need somebody to, to test out something, you know, oh, yeah. see how, I'm going to hold you to that. Really? I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, please. Because, I mean, we, we we in here. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> wow, man. So, Coach Jake, in the midst of all this stuff, do, doing everything that you do and, you know, e even being a part-time hooper, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Uh, what do you what do you do for like what do you do for fun? Well, it's sleep. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, well, I mean, honestly, I I I just like to chill. I you know watch movies, binge watch stuff. Um, if I'm not doing that, I'm at a good brunch. I love me a brunch, so I'm at a good brunch. And then I definitely spend time with my family whenever I can. Uh, that's something that's very, very important to me, and that's my sanity. So if I'm having, you know, I'm off time at work or, you know, if I'm feeling a little homesick, I, like, I just go home, and that just resets me. So that's that's really my fun time, just, you know, spending time with my family outside of my job and everything else that I'm doing. Mm. Dope, dope, dope. Okay, spend spending time with the fam, bam. That, that's what's up. That's what's up. So even though I know you kind of alluded to this earlier, but I think there's still something more there. So where does where what does in game goal look like for Coach Coach Jay? I know you said you know potentially AD and administration, but I'm still gonna put the question out there. What 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 does in game goal look like for you to be able to look back and say, I did this, so now I feel I feel like I I, I did what I need to do. Hmm. End game goal. I mean, it's <sighs> honestly, that's, that's it. I, I really never really thought about it. I just like going back to it. And, you know, I, like you said, I hit it on it a little bit. I, I really just want to be back into, you know, the HBCU world, being able to, you know, <laughs> kind of nav navigate through that. I mean, if things do take off, you know, with my brand and stuff like that, maybe it'd probably be like, you know what, I I might just sh shallow away from this and just focus on that. But as of right now, it's just to, you know, be an AD at the HBCU level. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now we're going we're gonna to get ready to dive into the two minute drill, but I have a, I have a, a, a warm up question to ask you before, okay. before we get there. So if if there's one individual, not if there, you get to pick one individual that that you could sit down and have brunch with. They could be alive or they could be dead. Who would that individual be for you just to sit down and just you know just break bread, have dialogue, really build with? Who would that person be? Uh, I you know I, I know people normally go you know sometimes like the famous route and stuff like that, but I probably would have to say my grandmother. Because mm. she, um, she's she, man, that lady, she's she's awesome. She was like the rock of our family. So when I went off to college my freshman year, she actually passed. So she never really, you know, got a chance to kind of see me, you know, play college or you know, just just mature as a woman. So if I could, I would literally sit down with her have a conversation with her because I know, you know, she's watching everything that I'm doing and just like, let me get your insight on this. How you feel about this? Or, you know, you know, are you, are you proud of me? Like what, what am I doing that's, that's making you proud so I can continue to do that? Because like mm -hmm. I said, that was, that was the glue of our family. That's, that's, that's my rock. So it would probably definitely be my grandmother. 
That's real. That's real. Shout out to Granny. Shout out to Granny. Shout out to Nana. Man, one time for the one time. <laughs> all right, all right. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a we're gonna take a a, a, a pivot. <laughs> we're gonna take a pivot into, into the two minute drill, Coach Jay. Just so you know, this is probably the, the episode where I've laughed the most. So you, you just set the record. Uh, just a record with that. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> but for those of you all who, who this might be your first time listening to two minute drills where we're just going to have a couple of rapid fire questions. I'm going to ask Coach Jay. And then from there, she's going to let you all know where you can find her, how you can follow her and and be on the lookout. Be, be on the lookout for the line dropping soon. Be on the lookout for the line dropping soon. So, Coach Jay, are you are you ready? Yep. Let's go. All right. And here we go. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Mm, okay. Mm. Drumsticks or flats? Flats. Fry hard. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. What, what's what, what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, probably have to be anything with seafood. So anything seafood, crab, shrimp. See, I told you from the south. Look at that. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. What's the what's the last book you read? Uh, the coffee bean. Mm. Mm. Okay. What, what's your What's your streaming show of preference? Streaming show of preference. It could be any show. Dang. Mm-hmm. Godfather of Harlem. Okay. And what What's What's the most underrated cereal? Mmm. <laughs> Fruit Loops. Okay, okay. And then one tip that you want to give to a student athlete? Uh, just once again, be authentic, be yourself, follow your heart. Don't let anybody dictate your decisions because ultimately it's your decision and you have to live through that decision. Dope, dope, dope. And bonus question, bonus question. Who's who's one guest that you would like to see me interview on Beyond the Ball next? Let's see. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Ooh, this is not. This is not. Ooh, I know two minutes is over. Ooh, this is. This is <laughs> no, this is a bonus. This is a bonus question. Is a bonus question. <laughs> I'm trying to be really strategic about. You know what? I'm not even being funny. I think you should. I think you should interview our associate head coach, Marquise Brown. Okay. Mm, that's that would be a good one. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Now, now let let all the good people know where they can find you and connect with you and follow you. Okay, so you can um either Instagram or Twitter, Coach J M Wilson. Um, uh, yeah, that's where you can follow me. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Slide in my DM. Very good at flying back. I'm not not that one is just gonna read it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people oh, think I gotta, I'm gonna read it <laughs> and I'm gonna I'm gonna respond. That's fair. Have you followed me back yet? Are you still haven't followed me back? Yet? We we've been on a show, so this. The th- <laughs> oh, okay. I, I told you before we started recording. Anyway, but <laughs> that was a bonus bonus question. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Well, Coach Jay, I, I I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate you taking the time. To, to hang out with the ballers mm-hmm. and myself and uh you know you already know i'm i'm cheering for you uh I'm, I'm looking forward to like i said seeing the line drop and you know just seeing how i can continue to support in any way possible so thank you i appreciate you and thank you for having me on the show most definitely most definitely <laughs> and to all the ballers out there you all <laughs> you all heard us today you heard coach jay if you have not followed and connected with her i would encourage you to do so just Go to Twitter, go to Instagram, type in Coach J.M. Wilson. Be sure to get connected uh, with her and, you know, send, send her a screenshot of the episode. Let her let her know what stood out. Let her know what you enjoyed about the conversation that we had about her story and about her journey. And of course, make sure that you follow the podcast. You subscribe on YouTube. Just type in Jonathan Jones Speaks and then you will see our YouTube channel there so you can be able to see. You know how how we cut up on the video, <laughs> but uh, until next time, ballers, I want you all just to continue, continue, continue to show up, continue to show out, and remember that this is your life. And at the end of the day, you can have what you want, but you have to do what it requires for you to do. 
I'm Jonathan Jones, and this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. <laughs>